Hello, my name is Leroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. Uh, in this episode here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some questions from some comments. And I also want to point out some other things that, and the story that they tell when, they, when you go to Dealey Plaza and stuff like that. So people know this information as well when they go there because they're going to hear a bunch of stories told about JFK assassination. And I want to point out some things that's true and not true. So first, before we get into this, before I start showing you stuff, uh, someone left a comment on there. They challenged me in doing, uh, I guess, an interview or whatever on live. Okay, I would do that, okay, but not at this time. And the reason why I said not at this time, because I've been very busy working on this documentary. And I want to make a video after this to show you some of the things that we're going to be doing. Now, when that is completely done, I will do the interview. Okay. I have no problem with that. This is from somebody named Google Earth user, or Google, or, uh, Google user, or whatever his name is. Okay. But what I want to do on that part there is I want to make sure that if you're going to talk to me about my research, then you show me your research as well. You tell me who you are, what kind of experience you have, how long you've been doing your research into the case. Don't point out other people's stuff, okay? Don't point out other people's research or whatever I'm talking about. If you want to do a proper interview, you want to do a proper showdown, as some people want to put it, present your research. Now, somebody else's hearsay or whatever, Present your research. Present your name. Let me know who you are. Okay. Don't buy, you know, because you don't know who you are when you got Google user. Okay. Anybody can come up with something like that. You know, like I said, you want to do a one on one, we can do it. But like I said, I want to get the documentary done first because that's priority number one right now for me. Then, like I said, I want to view your research, not somebody else's research, your research. Don't point out this person said this or this person said that or this or that, this and that. No. Okay. We're going to talk about my research, my investigations. But let's talk about yours as well. So, hey, if you want to put me down and run me down on this, then, hey, let me see what you have. Like I've always tell people, if you have some evidence to show, show it. Don't talk about it or anything else. Show it. That's what I always tell people. Okay, and present it the right way. Now, someone asked me questions. Uh, Mike, I think from Australia, asked me about the people over here in this image here, and this one here. You know, the people in there. These are people in the Pelagora now. I mean, in shelter number three, the gunman has already left. These people here that we're seeing in the shelter right now at this point. They're actually people that was running in there for cover and stuff like that. And this is after the assassination. Because after the assassination, the gunman didn't stay around. As soon as, this, as soon as the people start running up the hillside there, they start running to the parking lot too, right along with them. So they can get, you know, hand off the rifles and then take off and stuff. Because remember, two tramps wasn't found in the shelter. They was found in a car box. I mean, in a train car box that they found there at the train station there behind. Daily Plaza here, they was already in uh, in uh, one of them box cars already. So that's where they was found. So they didn't stick around in Pelagoro there, I mean in shelter number three. These are people that we're seeing that's going in there now after the assassination. Now, some things I want to point out, like the people when they go to Daily Plaza, you're going to hear stories. And I'm going to show you some things and stuff like that. And I'm going to, you know, like I said, I'm going to show evidence like I always do. And there's a lot of things I want to show to people and stuff like that. Because when you go to Dealey Plaza, okay, and for me even being there and hearing their stories as I'm hearing them telling people, they're going to point to um, Texas School Book Depository. And they're going to say, see, with that tree right here, what you're talking about, this tree right here, with that tree in a way, there's no way that Oswald could take a shot from here, from his location, the sniper's nest, to this location because this tree is blocking his view. Again, they're pointing at what it looks like today. But when we go back 
to what it looked like then, okay, which is right here, which I'll pull up this image right here. We'll zoom in. We'll zoom in. Okay, here's that tree right here. And as you see, there ain't that much foliage in this part right here. And let's bring up the other one now. We're going to zoom in on that same location. So we get it all in there. Okay, as we see it back then, yes, Oswald from this uh, window here does have a clear view to JFK. Nowadays, when they point it out, they say, look at here. See this tree right here? There's too much, you know, the foliage in that tree and stuff like that is blocking his view. But again, they're not telling people today it's blocking view. But back then, no, there was a way he can see and shoot through there because the trees wasn't as big as it was as we see it today. Because you see this is a smaller tree, now it's a larger tree. As you see here, we see one, two, three windows and a half. Now all we can see is one, two, three windows, and this is already growing up into the fourth window. Because you got one, two, three, four, and half windows shown here. But when we go over here, we have one, two, three, and half windows showing here. You see what I'm saying? So we got three and a half over here, and we got four and a half windows over here showing, but only three and a half windows showing here. So this window here is completely blocked now, and the tree is now up in the center of this tree. I mean, this tree now, as you see here, is in the center of this window, almost covering this window completely, which is right about here. Okay, so when they go to Dealey Plaza and they say, well, look at that tree right there, okay, there's no way that Oswald could have had a clear shot to JFK from this location because of this tree is blocking his view. But again, like I said, they're telling you of what the tree looks like today. Not back then. That's when you as a you know, person stand back saying, hey, wait a minute, that tree was smaller back then. Now, when you point something like that out to them, they get kind of upset about it. But you're trying to, you know, you've got people surrounding you and stuff like that. They're there trying to learn the truth as well. So if you ask these guys these questions, like, wait a minute, wasn't that tree smaller back then? <clears throat> they're, gonna, they're probably come up with a different story to back that up. But throw that question out there. Because, you know, they need to, people need to learn this. And people need to know this. They also sit there and say, well, hey, JFK, I mean, you know, Oswald was seen on a second floor lunchroom. He wasn't drinking a Coke. He was drinking a Dr. Pepper. When Oswald was seen on the second floor of the Texas School Book Depository, he was standing right here in front of the Coke machine getting a Coke. But they said, oh, no, he was drinking a Dr. Pepper. Here's where the Dr. Pepper came into play in this image here. There's a Dr. Pepper bottle laying right here, and they found a bag of chicken bones right over here on the other side of the Texas School Book Depository on the sixth floor. This was not ate by Oswald, or even Dr. Pepper was not even drunk by Oswald. The Dr. Pepper came into play, like I said, because of this image right here. And it was on the sixth floor where they found that bottle. And it doesn't have Oswald's fingerprints on it or nothing else like that. But Oswald was actually getting a Coke, not a Dr. Pepper. He was drinking a Coke on the second floor, getting it out and getting ready to open it. Okay. So the Dr. Pepper story of Oswald drinking the Dr. Pepper, that's where it came from. Okay, they just want to throw that in there more to add more excitement and more suspense to that story saying, this person's wrong, I'm right, because Oswald wasn't drinking Coke, he was drinking Dr. Pepper. So there, my story is telling, the story I'm telling you should prove that the government's lying because the story I'm telling you. That's what they're telling us. Another thing I want to point out, when me and my friend Tony was sitting there listening to Robert Groden talking about the JFK assassination. He has three images that he was showing of JFK's head. Now, what I want to present here is he shows this image here. He shows this image here and he shows this image here. Now, these are the actual autopsy images. Okay. These are the real autopsy images of JFK. So I have no beef with that or anything else because these are real actual uh, autopsy images of JFK. However, he does show another one like this. Okay, but it's not this because you don't see the surgeon's hands or nothing like that, the doctor's hands, nothing like that. 
you see the back of JFK's head, you see the bullet hole here. Okay, you don't even see the blood really that much. And you see the back of JFK's head here. But it's like this, mostly. Like this. This is completely gone. Okay. They, well, this is not the image he shows, which I'm going to show you the image he's actually showing. But it's the opposite. Like I said, he shows an image somewhat like this. The image he shows. But he shows this part of JFK's head is completely gone. And that image. And like I said, here's where that came from. That autopsy image that he's presenting there is his evidence is actually from the JFK movie from Oliver Stone. As you see here, this is the, whack, the, the dummy that they used, the prop dummy they used in a JFK movie. Well, as you see in that autopsy image that he presents, where it shows this completely gone right here, is actually the back view of this prop dummy. Because you can see the brain is completely gone here, as you see right here. It's completely gone right here. This is the gash that he shows in that autopsy image right here. Okay, he says no one's never seen this autopsy image before. This is the first person. I was trying to take a picture of it, but he won't let me take a picture of it. And I think you know the reason why, because they knew who I am, Leroy Blevins. And if I took a picture of it and I presented it to the people and stuff, that's still going to blow his case away as well. But it's the opposite side of this. So basically, they got this prop dummy right here. I'll pull this one up. They, uh, whoop, wrong one. So they have the prop dummy right here. And they're just showing, like I said, the back part with this like this. But not these hands here. Not this ruler here or nothing like that. Just show the back part of the prop dummy like this. But all we're doing is seeing the backside of this prop dummy. That's what we're seeing because this whole section he's got completely gone, which lines up to the fake dummy prop that we see in Oliver Stone's movie. Now remember, Robert Groden did work on Oliver Stone's movie, JFK. He was a technical advisor, uh, advisor on that film. But I just wanted to point this out because this is something else you're going to see when you're in Dealey Plaza. Like I said, they don't show the front view of it. This is the front view of the prop dummy. What they do is show the back view of the prop dummy, like this, with this whole section completely gone, which is this prop dummy here, which will show this whole section completely gone, right here. Okay, they'll show this section completely gone. You're going to see that image if you go to Dealey Plaza. Okay, if you go to Dealey Plaza, they're going to show you that prop image from the movie Oliver Stone, which is like this, but it's not got this hands in or nothing. They're just going to show the back view is just almost like, almost like this. But it's almost identical to this, but it's not. Which has got the prop dummy. And all you're going to see is this right here. Okay, and when, that's what it's going to look like right here. This is basically how it was standing, like right like this. But you can see some more of the back and everything else. And this whole section of JFK's has gone, like right here. That we see this prop dummy. But you don't see no brain matter or anything inside the skull or nothing like that. All you see is an empty hollow shell. I just wanted to point that out as well because, like I said, you know, there's a lot of things I want to answer some questions, like I said. And, you know, show a little bit more things for people. So when they go to Dallas, okay, and they hear these stories, okay, I want them to know the true story. Okay, so when they go there... And they sit there and says, hey, you know, Oswald was drinking a Dr. Pepper. He wasn't drinking a Coke. No, the Dr. Pepper came from that one image there. When they say Oswald didn't have a view, you know, they're going to tell us that Oswald didn't have a view at the time of the assassination because of that tree that's right here. Okay. Remember, they're talking about nowadays society. Nowadays. Okay, when when you're doing research and doing investigation and everything else, you have to look at these facts and look back at what it looked like back then. As you see right here, look at all these trees right here. They're not that full or anything, but now look at it. It's all full brushes against each other and everything else. It's all more fuller now stuff. But again, like I said, they're not telling us, well, 55 years ago when he took a shot from that window, Okay, the tree's blocking it now, 
but you know the tree was a lot smaller. If they said something like that, I would say, okay, you know, that's fine and dandy. But when they were presenting that, there's no way Oswald could took a shot from that window and took that fatal headshot JFK because the tree is blocking his view. Today it is, but back then it wasn't. So you see, there's a lot of things you have to look at when you go to Dilly Plaza stuff. And I just want to make this video present a little bit more evidence and present a little bit more facts into the case. So anybody that goes there knows where this stuff comes from or one thing or another, plus answer a couple of questions. Like I said, for that uh, Google uh, viewer, whatever he is, uh, you want to do the one-on-one, -on -one, like I said, I'll do it after I'm done with the documentary. And after you present to me your research and stuff like that, your research, not somebody else's, your research, and present me of who you really are and everything else like that. Because there's no sense in, you know, doing this or doing that unless you know who you're talking to. Do you understand what I'm saying? So don't forget that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends about it. It's always in the description down below. you find a set where you can own my book, Evans Conspiracy, the only book you need in JFK assassination. Thank you, and you have a pleasant, pleasant day.